fun time with the Air Force. Um, we're excited about what transpired today as a result of a lot of hard work by a lot of, a lot of our coaching staff. It didn't quite have the, the, the pizzazz of last year when we were fighting the guys down at the end. Uh, we either had a yes or a no uh, early, and it was simply a matter of hanging on. Uh, we're not done recruiting yet. We're still talking with some guys, and um, we'll see how it goes. But uh, it's a fun time for us. We, we, for the first time in the whatever recruiting classes we've had, that we've been able to recruit toward needs. Um, rather than just trying to get the team better, we, we knew specifically where we wanted to go, and we did that. Um, recruited four corners, recruited a half a dozen rush ends with our new defensive coordinator, who probably most of you have met. We're going to change the scheme just a little bit, play a little bit more three down and some four down look, kind of a hybrid three down uh, defense. And we needed the type of personnel that could somehow fit that. And we did a nice job of recruiting. And our coaching staff deserves all the credit in the world. We do it on a shoestring, as you all know. This is a unique place to recruit to. It's taken a while to learn how to do that. I talked with uh, Bob Wagner the, uh, a month or so ago, and he, he, told, he told us it took him about six years to exactly figure out how to go about recruiting in Hawaii because of the uniqueness of this place and the depth, the distance that we're from. And, I think we're trying to figure that out. So we feel very, very good about what we did. Uh, Try to be as frugal as we could be, obviously, because costs are high. Um, we allowed 20, 56 recruits to visit campus, and we only brought in 22. And we feel good about that. We brought in the 22 fellows to fill 24, 25 spots. Uh, especially feel good about the local players. We always do. That's the emphasis. Uh, and then we also feel good about two young people that are already in the program. That we recruited one out of UCLA, Jeremy Castro, that you see, and the other one is Quentin Pedroza, a wide receiver out of Utah that played with, played for me as a freshman at Utah, and uh, came with us red shirt last year. We expect big things out of him. Questions? <coughs> Those two that you just mentioned are they pretty much the guys that you expect will be uh, immediate contributors then? Yes, um, they're both older. Um, Quentin, like I said, is a red would be his, this is his third year. Fourth year. Anyway, he has two more to play, two to play two. Uh, Jeremy Castro, given the normal situation, is a young man we would never be able to get here. He was a four-star guy out of Temecula, Vista Murrieta, who had it was an outstanding program. We probably would not have been able to recruit him here, but because of circumstances, we got him. So, yeah, those guys make immediate impacts. You know, in the old days, your recruiting class would be measured three or four years from now, mm -hmm. but that's not their way anymore. Thanks to all of you and the media and the Twitters and all that other junk that goes on. People expect immediate, uh, immediate results. And, and because of that, you know, we, we, we uh, adopted the philosophy that we're going to try to get these guys ready to play. Yeah, we are. Is there a certain position group that you feel is strongest in this recruiting class? Yeah, the corners. Without a question, the corners. And we knew that. We were very little, had very little depth on the corners. You know, we have kind of a little bit of a formula that we use. Uh, uh, as far as wanting so many corners, so many, you know, uh, because you have to. It's, I think it's 41 offense, 41 defense, and three special teams. Uh, Kevin walked in and, and kind of adjusted the numbers a little bit. They're very fluid numbers, and we felt like we needed to improve in the corner, and we did. We, I mean, no question in my mind. Uh, one of these guys, Terrell Jackson, was committed to San Diego State out of New Orleans. New Orleans uh, San Diego State has always recruited well in New Orleans, and he, we were able to turn him. He was, Something happened on his trip to San Diego State. I, I don't know what. And he called us, and, and he's coming with us. So that's a real good get. Jalen Rogers, the other cor uh, junior college corner, heav heavily recruited young man, just fell in love with us, with this place that we call home, and um, decided to come. Cesar Furman is a defensive back from a corner from uh, Moore Park that we really liked on film, was hoping to get him at the semester. Um, had a class that he needed to get fixed up, so he'll be in the fall. Uh, Nick Nelson, by the way, the other fellow, just was voted. There's a big all-star game back east, um, the state of Maryland versus the state of Pennsylvania. The top players in both states play in a game they call the Big 33, and Nick was chosen to represent Maryland. So we're real happy with that. You only have two junior college guys on there. So the emphasis now is moving more towards freshmen? Nah. You know, I, I just, the, the movement is to get good players here, right? We actually have three, right? Um, Shawley. Caesar and Jalen. Okay. Uh, I believe so. 
That leaves about 20 freshmen? That leaves about 20. So the Kansas City the emphasis more on, on looking for freshmen? Well, I, 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 I don't, I'm not so sure we need immediate help in any one area other than the corner. Uh, you know, for example, the outside rush people, you know, we have guys in the program. Garcia Williams and Jeremy Castro and David Manoa, we just need to fill the depth in those areas, and that depth is best filled by freshmen and junior college guys. You know, when you look outside the, 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 the secondary, are there any other true freshmen on here that, you know, you think could elevate themselves into some significant playing time in particular? That's a good question. Um, I think uh, Danny Mulanga, uh, a safety out of Dallas, you know, the whole idea is to get corners moving the safeties, get safeties moving the outside linebackers, make outside linebackers rush in so you get a lot quicker. Danny Mulanga is, um, it sounds like a Polynesian name, but it's not. It's Mulanga. I don't know, whatever. Whichever way is Polynesian, it's the other one. Um, he's uh, African American from uh, Dallas, and, and we, he's 6'3, about 290, 200 pounds, 190 pounds. Uh, does a good job. Let me think. Devin Stubblefield, the young man out of St. Louis, who we thought was the best player in the state. Uh, we think he can come in and help right away. Brought in a nice running back too, DJ Riggins. Does he have the size yet? To Not quite ready yet. He's a little on, little on, a, on the thin side. I think in time, it'll, you know, and that's an area again where we don't need immediate help. You know, Fungo mm -hmm. Wiley's coming back. Um, uh, so we have um, uh, uh, Joey obviously, Laka Laka, and, and uh, Diosmi played well toward the end of the year, and, Lock and, and uh, Fungo. So we, we're not in a real rush to have someone there. Coach, you were talking about moving to the 3 4 at the more multiple front. Was that difficult to change your recruiting style, or was that something that you guys planned to do? You know, we, we, we looked around and we looked at our roster, and we, we have those type of people. You know, the Garcia Williams and then Jeremy Cash was at 6'3, 240 pounds. They can even put his hand on the ground and work, play up. David Manoa is another one. And, and then realizing that, you know, it's difficult to get the 6 foot 5 inch defensive lineman in Hawaii. You know, all the Polynesians are 6 foot tall. And, um, so we just thought that was a, a it's not, it's not a, exclusively out of a three down. We'll, we'll, we'll move it around like, like you see on Sundays. Obviously, you got to adjust. How much, sorry? How much more body did you get to him than, uh, with his adjustment on the... Well, he still only gets 41. But uh, we, 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 we lost some on defense. And we needed to replace the numbers on defense. So we gave him uh, first crack. You know, we, we, nothing changes. The, if you're going to be successful, you have to play great defense. That's the number one goal of our football program. It's our game plan every week, and, and so we'll give him what he needs to, to, have, to give us a chance to be successful that way. Obviously, a lot of it was made about the quarterback that decided not to come here, the local kid, and we don't have to get too much into depth in that, but is there, are there other plans right now to bring yeah. in another quarterback potentially? Yeah. Yep, yep. Without going into exactly yep. who it is, yep. but uh, is it, are you yep. looking at JC or freshman? Freshman. We freshman. don't feel we need JC quarterbacks. Because when you first got here, and that December 2012, when you were first hired, you had a short time to get that recruiting class together. Since then, you've had a couple. How do you feel about this one overall, as opposed to those others, maybe? Well, I thought last year was what was fun because we got to compete against the big fellas. Um, this one is is solid, I think, because we we, we are at a point, hopefully, enough, at a point where we can recruit toward need. We don't have to just go get a wholesale new play, better players in here. So uh, we feel very good about it. Very good about what we accomplished at the specific needs that we had. And again, it's a real credit to the coaching staff. They, they worked awfully hard in a very, very unique situation as far as recruiting is concerned. Now, as far as the local kids specifically, you know, usually when you think of Hawaii prospects, you think of centers and guards, but you guys have a receiver, you guys have a DB in Puma Williams. Where do you think the, the strength of the local class is this year? Character. Uh, I love the character of our guys. I love the, the academic part of our guys. Puma is a, is a 3.5 student. <clears throat> Dakota Torres is a good student. Uh, Kyle Gifford at Kamehameha, eh, got a little ways to go, but uh, for the most part, they're, they're high character young guys, and, and they're good. You know, the, the concern in Hawaii, because, you know, there's so many good players here, and, and so many people come over here to recruit. The whole, the concern is the academic stuff. You know, we, we, you have to make sure they qualify academically, and then you have to make sure they fit into what you're trying to get done, because uh, there's awfully good football players running around here. Are you expanding your base on the mainland, like in Texas, Maryland? Are you now going to shift that way instead of um, Australia or? No, Zealand? no, we're shifting to where we can find good players. We we work hard at it. We rely on a lot of contacts. You know, if you were if you were at a school on the mainland, you take the state of California and you divide it by the freeways nine ways. 
we can't do that here. We, we can't go in there like that. We don't have the, the money that will allow us to do that. So we have to rely a lot on, on, on contacts, uh, friends that we've made along the way, uh, and, and that helps us. That really helps us. So we, we'll go wherever it takes to, to find good players. 16 of the 24 signees on defense as an offensive guy. You okay with that? I, I like to win, Mike. I like to win. <laughs> I haven't had much good feeling. We're going to have to get this thing going. I believe it, last year you talked about how that class kind of was a foundation for where you'd like to see things going. You know, you said to judge these guys in four years from now. With that being said, with this new class now, how do you think that they're building upon the foundation and how do you think that they're going to basically uh, work towards the goals you'd like to see as far as wins and as far as where you'd like to see this program go? If you showed up on time, I already answered that question. <laughs> um, um, I decided. <laughs> no, you know, it, it, I think we're at a Good point time. now where that foundation was built that we can fill in spots, and that's what we talked about: getting the cornerbacks, getting the rush ends, getting you know. And offensively, you talked about only eight of them, Mike, is because we were younger last year. You know, our, our offensive line is a year older now, and we had recruited some good young talent last year. So, hopefully, as you build a program, you can kind of fit the pieces in, so you have enough at every every spot you get. So I, 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 you know, last year was hopefully the foundation. This year, I think, is just the filling in so we were solid in all the areas that we're trying to get done. I don't know of an area now that we can say is our weakness. I, hope, I mean, you don't know these guys can come in and play. You hope they can. When, but on paper, yeah, we filled all our spots. And that's why the number that you talked about, Mike, because uh, we're, we're young on the offensive line, and we had a good young group of fellows that, you know, you know, we only took one, but again, in this puzzle, this formula that you talk about, we had lot 16 off in the line, and I think we're at 14. So we're getting close. It's, it's etched in sand. You know, it's never going to hit right along. Anything else? Oh, you were talking about Stubblefield being one of the best players locally. Do you have any concerns with him being a two-sport athlete that he might miss nope. some spring ball? Baseball? None, none whatsoever. I, I, hey, if you're that good, go play. You know, this it's a game. Four years from now, you're gonna, you know, you're gonna be done playing. Maybe he'll have a career after that, but no, none, none whatsoever. Um, I like that, in fact. That means they're good players, right? That means they're good players, and, and we'll figure that out later. You get, you get good players in here. We, I remember way back when uh, the reason where I was coaching at, we got Jim McMahon in there because he felt he was a baseball shortstop, and that's what he wanted to do. And so you let him do it, and then it works itself out at the toward the end of the game, toward the end of the deal. So that's not a problem at all. In fact. Uh, it's kind of fun to see. It means he's pretty good. All right. Thank, Thank you. Very nice, Coach. Thank you, Coach. Thank you.